Hey there everyone, welcome back to Game Vine, and my name is Dave, and today we are looking at another dexterity game, and dexterity we go figure, and this one is called Menora. Let's do it. Now, Menora reminds me a little bit of the pillar game, Vila Paletti, and that's why I instantly bought it on Amazon, but when it got to me, it looked like Vila Paletti hit a shrink ray before it got to me because these pillars are small. It's different in the sense of it's a cooperative dexterity game. There's not many of those out there. The theme is you're trying to erect an a ancient temple uh, that you found a site for. The theme, I'm going to tell you right now, is razor thin. But the dexterity aspect, well, let me see if it nails it and uh, we'll see you together. Let me show you the production of this game and then we'll go from there. Let's go. All right, so this is what comes in the box of Menara and it is a ton of these little pillars or cylinders and they're tiny compared to uh, Villa Paletti over here, and that's what I was expecting when I, when I bought this on Amazon, but when I got the tiny ones, I was a little bit underwhelmed, but they are quality, they're painted nice, there's more yellows as you can see than anything else, and the pieces here are really curvy and wibbly and wobbly and got holes in them, they're, they're unique and every piece is pretty much its own thing. Cardboard though is really nice, art is phenomenal, the box is beautiful, it also has a back that you'll be drawing from. Square cards. Love square cards. Are they linen finish? No, they're not linen finish. <sighs> but you have this piece here that will be, it's like a kind of exchange market or whatever. Uh, let me build that right now and then show you how to play. Let's go. So I'm just going to go over the basic of the rules. There might be a few that I missed, but you can see those in, in the rule book. Basically, I'm set up for an easy um, run. You can do normal or hard or easy. Basically right here you got to build up three levels once you do that you win. The game will continue to end till one of three things happens. If you build up to your third floor or or if you deplete the bag of pillars. On your turn you're choosing to either do it a easy, medium, or hard task and each one of these cards has a little something on here that you'll need to do. Basically here you'll have to put two pillars on the same platform. But here, you'll have to put three pillars on any platform you want. As you can see, there's a bit of difference. Now, it doesn't matter which ones you do, um, but they have to correspond to the colors here. I have six pillars in my hand, and everyone else will too. Now, before I draw a card, I can choose to go to this little market here and exchange as many of the pillars as I want with the ones that I have. There's a blue there, so blue is pretty good. I might want to get that. Or I can exchange any of the pillars with any of my um, camp mates, which we can do that as much as we want as well. So let's say I'm doing the easy one here with the two plat uh, pillars on one platform. I'm gonna go for this one right here and this one right here. The base floor here is uh, touching on two points for each one of the lands. That's basically a setup for the um, the, the base floor you can add to the base floor if you want but you just have to follow those rules about uh, touching two points on the floor a uh, base floor here but you will not put a floor down until you complete a, a floor here or until one of these cards tell you to do so so let's say that we were completing this guy right here we would always draw the top floor from the pile here and place it on however we can. Now we have two floors, we're almost successful. We gotta just build one more and then we'll trigger the end of the game. Now, I had to use four pillars. I always will draw up to six pillars at the end of my turn. Now, if you ever go to place a pillar and you uh, go ahead and drop it, well, that can just be picked up and placed there as long as you can do that. But if you ever go place a pillar and you knock over a floor, that is one of the three in-game um, triggers. I messed up there. So the in-game triggers are if this deck is depleted or if you knock over a floor or if this um, bag is depleted. Once one of those in-game things has triggers, if you have three floors or whatever the stipulation is over here, you win. Now, what if you cannot make a floor? Maybe you don't have the colors. Um, then you would have to take the card and add it to the amount of 
floors you have to produce and that's not good the third heart hardest one here means you have to take some of these pillars and put them up higher two floors uh, right here so two of them and one of them up higher so I wouldn't even be able to accomplish that because I don't have enough pillars or floors so that would just immediately go to our pile over here which would not be good so we would want to uh, build up uh, our pillars and floors with the easy for a little bit then go to medium and then go to hard you don't want to leave hard for last I've done that a few times and it's bad because uh, well they are telling you to do hard things sometimes and then when you get so high because you will be building quite the um, tower it might not be as easy for you to do so but that's all you're doing you're um, trading your pillars with the market and your campmates you're pl uh, flipping over a card you're completing that card drawing back up and trying to trigger one of the end game goals when you have enough floors so that's all i have to say about that let me go ahead and tell you more about what i think so that is how you play menara and as always zock kills the production let me go ahead and give this a grade it gets an 86 from me which is the game buying play it award it has a few issues let me go over the issues uh, first then the first one being it's a cooperative game and a cooperative dexterity game so you're going to have that issue where tim knocks over the uh, whole tower and it all kind of falls on tim <laughs> no pun and in, in, uh, intended there and you can have a nice table, but there might be that sourness at, at Tim for knocking over the tower once again. So there is that aspect, and you might have to deal with that. Also, yeah, the pillars are a bit smaller than I thought. I expected them to be a tad bit bigger. Um, they're done well, but I don't know. If, if it was just a tad bit bigger, I think I would have uh, given it a two or three more points. And there is a lot going on for a dexterity game. I'm putting that in the bad category, but then I'm going to go ahead and segue over into the good category because there is a lot going on in this game, and that's good and bad. You have to learn how to think on your feet in Minara, more so in any dexterity game I've ever had to play because the cards are random, the uh, tiles for the floors are random, and you have no idea what to do unless you're in that moment and if you don't if you make the wrong call you put the floor in the wrong place or you use the pillar or you don't trade with the market in a right way or you go to the expert level too fast well it is going to hurt you and there is rarely a time where you can come back from taking a few bad decisions but i do like the cooperative aspect in the sense that Everyone has a main goal and everybody, everybody's talking at the table trying to make sense of what the next best move is and what pillars to use. The hive mind is a good thing overall, but again, there's that John knocked over the tower again. And like I said, the production is brilliant, the art is brilliant, the gameplay is, it's a dexterity game. I do think it has a little unique kind of spin to it, but it's been done before, but it nails that as well. Theme, ugh does not nail the theme at all Blah. but the box is cool i like the box and the replayability of this one i'm not too sure how often i'm going to play this the fact that i have to play it a cooperative game with this means that i think this sits well with a three player account uh, me and my partner played it it just seemed to be too long for a two player game but for a three player game it seems to ride that fine line of ending at just the right point and who am I recommending this for? Pretty much the gamer of our hobby. The person that who likes dexterity games but wants a little bit more. This is definitely not going to be a good entry point for anyone, um, be it older or young uh, and or new to our hobby. I think this is an, an advanced dexterity game. So if you've worked a few dexterity games in the past, you would be able to come to this one more seamlessly than somebody who hasn't. So I would reserve this one till later on, until people know what they're doing with dexterity. But with that being said, you already know if you want this game or not. It will be in the description below. There will be a link that will shoot you right over there so you can pick it up. If you haven't already though, click like and subscribe. My name is Dave. Until the next time that I see you on another Dexterity Week video, have a great rest of your day and a great time with all you play. You heard it here in the game fine. I'm out. Bye.
Vi Nation, we love making content here for you on the channel and we're almost to 10,000 subscribers. So subscribe now and help us out. This video right here, I think you'll like. This video right here, YouTube thinks you'll like. Or you can just sit here and watch me dance as a dinosaur for a little bit longer. You can visit us at our social media outlets and we're going to be improving our Patreon here soon. That's all for today. Miko, it's time to go. Good girl, Miko.